The Jack Benny Program, presented by Lucky Strike. Be happy, go lucky, be happy, go lucky, strike, be happy, go lucky, go lucky, strike today. Try every brand in this great land and you'll agree with me. The finest tasting cigarette is LSMFT. Yes, siree. Lucky's taste better than any other cigarette. We're heading for a picnic and we'll have a lot of fun with better tasting Lucky Strikes for each and every one. Honestly, Lucky's taste better than any other cigarette. Be happy, go lucky, be happy, go lucky, strike, be happy, go lucky, go lucky, strike today. Friends, Lucky's taste better than any other cigarette. And here's the reason. Fine tobacco, and only fine tobacco always gives you the enjoyment of a better tasting cigarette. And LSMFT, Lucky Strike, means fine tobacco. Tobacco that smokes smooth and mild, that gives you better taste with every puff. Yes, Lucky Strike, and Lucky Strike alone gives you an extra measure of smoking pleasure. So for everything you want in a cigarette, for complete smoking enjoyment, be happy, go lucky. Make your next carton Lucky Strike. You'll agree, Lucky's taste better than any other cigarette. Be happy, go lucky, go lucky, strike today. Remember, Lucky's taste better than any other cigarette. The Lucky Strike program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. Ladies and gentlemen, on next Sunday, Jack Benny will be in New York doing another television show. And right now, he's home packing for the trip. Gee, this is my fourth trip to New York this season. I like to travel. <laughs> no, Polly, you can't go with me this time. <laughs> I wonder... I don't know where to live in New York. I wonder if I should stay at the Acme Plaza Hotel again. Yeah, I guess so. They're so considerate. They always give me a room with congenial people. <laughs> yeah, I guess I'll stay there. Oh, Rochester. Yes, boss? I hope you're packing enough clothes. You know, we'll be gone for 10 days. Oh, yes, I've packed enough for both of us. Your pinstripe suit, my herringbone suit, your blue suit, my brown suit, your gray suit, and my tweed suit. No, no, Rochester, it's my tweed suit. Remember, I won it back. <laughs> You know, I beat you on that last poker hand. Don't you remember I had four aces? Oh, yeah, I only had three. <laughs> you know, it's fun playing with all the red cards wild. <laughs> now, finish the packing. And remember what I told you. Remember what I told you to put in the suitcase? Oh, boy. Rochester, I don't care what you say. I'm taking it with me. So put it in my suitcase. I want to wear it on my arrival in New York. Boss, if people want to throw ticket tape, they'll throw it. You don't have to wear that old army cap. <laughs> well, maybe you're right. Anyway, after you finish packing, go out and polish the car. Polish the car? Why? Why? Because we're driving it to New York. That car? <laughs> Quiet, Polly, I'll handle this myself. <laughs> Rochester, there's nothing to handle. I'm driving my car to New York. And to keep the cost down, I put an ad in the paper for passengers to share expenses. <laughs> in fact, I expect several people to drop in and see me. Well, I'm waiting. How come you have no comment on that? I never interfere with a plot line. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, maybe that's someone now. Come in. Oh, it's you, Dennis. Come on in. Thank you. Dennis, what do you got in that package? My pajamas. Can I sleep here tonight? Well, I don't see why not. But why don't you sleep at home? Oh, I don't like to be in a big house alone. Alone? Yeah, my parents did it again. <laughs> did what? Moved away and didn't tell me where. <laughs> oh, for 
heaven's sakes, Dennis. What did you do wrong this time? Well, if I tell you, you'll only side in with them. Well, not necessarily, Dennis. What did you do? I got up early this morning and fed the goldfish. Well, why should your parents get mad at that? I fed them to our cat. <laughs> Well, Dennis, that's the most awful thing that I've I ever... knew you'd side in with them. Well, certainly. Who could be on your side? The cat. <laughs> now, look, Dennis, if you want to stay here tonight, you can. But right now, leave me alone because I'm busy packing. Why? You going someplace? Yes, I'm going to New York. See, next Sunday, I'm doing my television show. Oh, who's going to be with you this time, Mr. Benny? Well, I'm going to have Rochester and Mary and Bob Crosby and another special guest. Who? Well, I'll give you a hint. He's one of the world's greatest golfers. Uh-huh. He won the U.S. Open, the PGA, and the Masters Tournament in Augusta, Georgia. Uh-huh. And they just made a picture about him at 20th Century Fox called Follow the Sun. Now, who is it? Ben Hogan. Hey. <laughs> hey, that's right, Dennis. And the name of the actor who played his part in the picture is Glenn Schwinn. <laughs> No, no, Dennis. That's Glenn Ford. That's Glenn Ford. I know, but if you mention Schwinn, they send you a bicycle. <laughs> well, Dennis, I didn't think you'd stoop so low as to... Tell him to put a bell on mine, will you? <laughs> What's the matter there early? Something off in your script? I didn't... By the way, Dennis... What song? <laughs> what song are you going to do on the program today? Well, I'm going to sing a wonderful number I just recorded for RCA Victor called Mr. and Mississippi. Well, let me hear it, Dennis, before you put you on your pajamas and go... Oh, hold it a minute, kid. Okay. There's the phone. Hello? Uh, this is the long-distance operator. Long distance? Yes, I have a call from you for, uh, from San Luis Obispo for Beanie. Beanie? The name is Benny. <laughs> Gee, I thought I was talking to a television star. Well, you are. As a matter of fact, next Sunday... Here's your we... party. Oh. <laughs> Hello, Jackson. Phil. Phil, what are you doing in San Luis Obispo? Me and my band played at one of the dance halls up here last night. You did? How did things go? Well, that's what I'm calling about. How would you like to do a little bail bond business? <laughs> Phil, you mean you and your boys are in jail? I ain't calling from no drugstore. <laughs> what? Good health to all from City Hall. <laughs> Phil, what happened at the dance that you boys got in such trouble? Well, I get this call to come up here and play for the San Luis Obispo chapter of the Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Soft Shell Crabs. <laughs> Well, I didn't know they had a chapter in San Luis Obispo. The main office is in Pismo Beach. <laughs> oh. Anyway, we come to the hall, we set up our instruments and start playing for the dance. Uh-huh. Everything goes along fine until about 10.30 when it's time for the waltz contest. Uh-huh. Suddenly, someone in the crowd yells out, Hey, Harris, how about singing That's What I Like About the South? Uh-huh. Operator, you keep <laughs> out of it. <laughs> Go ahead, Phil. So I start singing that little number that made me famous. That was at 10.30. Yeah, and at 1 o'clock in the morning with 20 courses to go, somebody dyed my hair with a ripe tomato. <laughs> no. And before you could say spade coolie, everybody started throwing things at us. Them soft-shell crabs are murdered. <laughs> Phil, you mean they threw soft-shell crabs at you? No, the crabs were throwing them, too. <laughs> That must have been quite a rhubarb. You ain't though. kidding, Dad. Everybody was in there fighting but Frankie. Frankie Remley? Yeah, he's just sitting there unconcerned until a Hubbard squash knocks the bottle out of his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Gee. At this, he jumps up, runs around the back of the hall, and pulls the main light switch. But they could still see the bandstand, and we're getting it from all directions. <laughs> Well, Phil, how could they see the bandstand if the lights were on? My drummer's head glows in the dark. <laughs> oh, yes, you shouldn't have painted that moon on all it. All right, all right. And then about 2 o'clock, when the police came in... Phil, they, what? Hang up. Maybe you're right, Jackson. From here on, it just gets ridiculous. <laughs> 
How about that bail money? I'll send it, I'll send it. Now, for 18 men, it amounts to... I know how much it amounts to. This is the third time this year. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye, Jackson. Goodbye. <laughs> that Harris can get into more trouble than anybody I ever saw. Will you keep quiet so I can sing? <laughs> Oh, yes, I'm sorry, Dennis. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, I was born to wander, I was born to roam, and Mr. and Mississippi made me feel at home. I can't recall my mother, I don't remember Dad. Mr. and Mississippi was all I ever had. Oh, I was born to wander. I was born to roam. And Mr. and Mississippi made me feel at home. Oh, I was born to wander. I was born to roam. And Mr. and Mississippi made me feel at home. My cradle was the river, my school a river boat. My teacher was a gambler, the slickest one afloat. My teacher was a gambler, the slickest one afloat. He taught me not to gamble on a petticoat. Oh, I was born to wander, I was born to roam, and Mr. and Mississippi made me feel at home. Oh, I was born to wander, I was born to roam, and Mr. and Mississippi made me feel at home. Oh, Betty May, I love you. I love you like a barefoot boy Loves a summer day The way a wandering gypsy Loves the changing scene Just like that restless river Loves old New Orleans Oh, I was born to wander I was born to roam I'd love the tiny village, a quiet country town, a house, a little garden with kitties running round. I'd be a faithful husband, oh, I'd be a trusting friend. Until I heard that steamboat coming round the bend. Well, I was born to wonder, I was born to roam, and Mr. and Mississippi made me feel at home. Oh, I was born to wonder, I was born to roam, and Mr. and Mississippi made me feel at home. That was very good, Dennis. Mr. and Mississippi. Would you mind sending me a, a record of it? Well, you can buy one for 85 cents. <laughs> well, what's on the other side? Mule Train by Lily Pond. <laughs> Cut that out, will you, Dennis? <laughs> you know, Dennis... I just can't shout anymore, you know what I mean? Dennis, sometimes you say the silliest... Want me to get that, boss? No, no, I'll get it. Oh, hello, Don. Well, hello, Jack. Just came over to say goodbye and wish you good luck on your TV show. Oh, thanks, Don. Come on in. Say, Don, you know, I have a wonderful idea for a commercial on my television show. I'm going to have the quartet come on dressed well, up. Well, now, wait a minute, Jack. Wait a minute. The sportsmen won't be able to be with you in New York. They won't? Why not? Well, they're opening at the Chicago Theater on May 18th. Oh, for heaven's sakes, Don. How can they do a thing like that to me? 
The season's not even over yet, and they have the nerve to go out and play a theater. But, Jack, you booked them. <laughs> oh, yes. Well, Don, look at Then you'll have to do the commercial. Me? Yes. But, Jack, just standing up doing a commercial on TV isn't funny. I won't get any laughs. Well, maybe you're... Hey, wait a minute, Don. I just thought of a wonderful idea. Now, every announcer does his commercial standing up. Well, of course. How else can you do it? Well, just for a novelty, this will be great on television. I'll have you lying on a shade lounge with a rose in your hair and a lucky strike in your mouth. Huh? And when you read the commercial, everybody will scream. Now, wait a minute, Jack. Nobody's going to laugh at anything that corny, and I'm not going to do it. Don, it'll get laughed, believe me. Now, Don, let's try it. Now, make believe we have a chaise lounge here. Now, lie down on the floor. Oh, now. Jack, this is the most ridiculous thing I ever heard of. Don, believe me, I know what I'm doing. It'll be terrific. Now, lie down on the floor. Oh, all right. But do it gently. We don't want to disturb the seismograph at Berkeley. <laughs> <laughs> now, Don, look at I'll hold the microphone. I'll hold the microphone down close to your face there. Now, go ahead, Don. Read the commercial. They'll love it. They'll scream. Well, okay. L-S-M-F-T, L-S-M-F-T. Lucky strike means fine tobacco. Yes, lucky strike means fine tobacco. There's never a rough puff in a lucky strike, and it tastes better than any other cigarette. Yes, folks, it's lucky strike. So round, so firm, so fully packed, so free and easy on the draw. Don, Don, talk louder. The radio waves aren't getting over your stomach. <laughs> Go ahead, continue. Yes, Lucky Strike and Lucky Strike alone gives you an extra measure of smoking pleasure. So for everything you want in a cigarette, for complete smoking enjoyment, be happy, go lucky! That's it, get up. Wasn't that clever? See? And listen, Don, I've got a Lulu for the next television show. You're going to read the commercial while standing in quicksand. Of course, you may have to talk fast to finish it, or the last few lines will sound like Shep Fields. Now, Don, if you'll excuse me... Uh, I've got to finish my packing. Oh, that's all right, Jack. I've got to run along anyway. It's Mother's Day, and I haven't got my mother a present yet. Oh. Gee, I, I don't know what to buy her. Well, Don, I would suggest flowers or perfume or maybe a box of fudge. A box of fudge? Hey, that sounds good. There you are, Don. Here, Jack. Thanks. <laughs> Well, so long, Don. See you later. Goodbye, Jack. <laughs> Rochester, uh, put back the perfume and the flowers. He took the fudge. You know. <laughs> you know, that's really going good today, isn't it? That goes good every day. I wish we could get rid of some of these petunias. We will, we will. Now, let's see. I'll have oh, to... Oh, Mr. Benny. Dennis, are you still here? Yeah, as long as I got my pajamas, I think I'll go upstairs and go to bed. All right, Dennis. You take the lower bunk. Yes, sir. Now, uh, let's see. Uh, Boss, you haven't got bunks in your room. It's just a single bed. Well, he doesn't know the difference. He sleeps under it. You know? <laughs> now, come on, Rochester. Uh, let's finish our... There's the doorbell. I'll get it. Oh. Oh, how do you do? How do you do? Are you the little old party who advertised for passengers to New York? <laughs> Why, yes. Yes, I am. Uh, won't you come in? Oh, uh, thank you. Have a seat, Miss, uh, Miss... I'm Miss Lee, Scarlett O'Hara Lee. <laughs> Scarlett O'Hara? Oh, you must have been named after the heroine in Gone with the Wind. Yes. Hmm? You see, my mother was crazy about Gone with the Wind, and I was born while she was in the middle of it. <laughs> Reading the book? No, watching the picture. <laughs> well, it was a long picture, you know. <laughs> now, uh... Now, uh, now, uh, Miss Lee, about the trip to New York... Uh, excuse me, but y'all didn't tell me your name. Beanie. <laughs> <laughs> 
I mean Benny. <laughs> I'm, I'm Jack Benny. Jack Benny? The radio comedian? That's me. Say something funny. <laughs> Well... Rochester, what are you doing? Calling one of your riders. <laughs> Never mind. Now, Miss Lee, uh, getting back to the trip, uh, you see, I intend to leave for New York tomorrow. Well, uh, that suits me just fine. Oh, by the way, Miss Lee, uh, what are you going to New York for? Look for a job? Uh-huh, no. I don't need a job. I came into a lot of money when my uncle in Texas passed away. Oh, was your uncle in Texas rich? No, but when they were digging his grave, they struck oil. <laughs> What a way to go. <laughs> now, uh, Mr. Benny, uh, on your way to New York, would y'all mind driving through Chattanooga? Chattanooga, Tennessee? Why? Well, that's my hometown. And next week, they're holding their annual fritter fry corn pone chitlin and hominy possum bake festival. <laughs> Yeah, I wish Phil Harris were here to interpret that for me. <laughs> All I understood was and and festival. Well, I'm very sorry, Miss Lee, but that's a little too far out of the way. You see, we're going through Salt Lake City, Cheyenne, Omaha, and Chicago. Wouldn't you like to go the northern route? If you weren't so cute, I'd slap your face. <laughs> You're cute, too. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mr. Benny, but I wouldn't miss that little old festival for all the yams in Louisiana. Well, I'm sorry, too. Anyway, it was nice meeting you, Miss Lee. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> Gee, I... Gee, I'm sorry she's not making the trip with us. We're giving me someone to play gin rummy with. <laughs> well, I better finish. Oh, Mr. Benny. Dennis, I thought you went to bed. I did, but I was tossing and turning. I can't fall asleep. Why not? You forgot to kiss me goodnight. <laughs> Dennis, go back under the bed. Yes, sir. Rochester, when he goes in the room, lock the door so he won't... I'll get it. Yes? How do you do? Are you the party that advertised about a trip to New York? Yes, yes, I am. Oh, well, I'm Mr. Parsons, and this is my wife. How do you do? Well, come right in, and... Oh, what a cute little baby. <laughs> is it a boy or a girl? A boy. Yeah, I thought so. Looks like it from here. Than... Now, uh... Here, sit down, Mrs. Parsons. Uh, you must be tired carrying the baby. Thank you very much. Hello, baby. A kitchen, kitchen, goo! <laughs> oh, look. His eyes are just like mine, aren't they? Are your eyes blue? Bluer than the right shoulder of a left handed ice man. <laughs> <laughs> now, Mr. Parsons. Do you and your wife... Oh, silly me, I forgot to introduce myself. Oh, I know you. You're Jack Benny. I used to see you every Sunday afternoon. You did? Oh, are you in radio? Yes. I'm a janitor at NBC. <laughs> well, how come you're going to New York? CBS bought me. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> now, uh, Mr. Benny... Could we take a look at your car and see if there'd be room for the baby? Well, of course, certainly. It's right out in the driveway there. Right this way, folks. <laughs> well, here's the car. <laughs> What's wrong with the baby? Mr. Benny, is this the car you're driving to New York? Yes, and if you'd like, I'll give you a demonstration. Oh, Rochester! Yes, boss! I want to take these people for a drive. Coming! Now, come on, folks. Jump in. We'll have to. There's no door. <laughs> it's around on the other side. Come on. Now, go ahead, Roger, to start the car. Yes, sir. <laughs> Let me 
something's wrong with the motor. <laughs> Rochester, did you clean the spark plugs this morning? I not only cleaned them, I had a long talk with them. <laughs> Never mind, try it again. Yes, sir. Ah, there we are. Now, Rochester, drive down towards Sunset Boulevard. Uh, wait a minute, Mr. Benny. Before you start, I'd like to change places with my wife. Why? I'm afraid she's uncomfortable. And I think I have the softer orange crate. <laughs> oh. oh. It's quite all right, John. See how nice she runs? And the way she takes the bump? Isn't it nice with the top down? Mm, yes, it is. John! John, look at the baby. He's grown hair. That's mine. It blew off. <laughs> Don't drive so fast, Rochester. Now, take it a little easier. <laughs> what was that? Our taillight just fell off. That's all it was. I guess it wasn't on very tight. <laughs> what was that? One of the hubcaps. Well, you see, those are things that we can easily... For heaven's sake, aren't you going to stop and pick them up? No, later we turn around and follow them. That's where we find our way back home. <laughs> Rochester, stop making things up. These people are interested in taking the trip with me to New York. Mr. Benny, I don't think we'll be interested in making the trip in this car. Just a minute, Mr. Parsons. You shouldn't back out just because a few minor things went wrong. What could ha that could happen to any car. I'm sorry, but I wouldn't risk going another block in this old junk. Old junk? Look, it's not brand new, but they don't make cars like this anymore. Mr. Benny, I'm a janitor, and I've swept up better things than this. <laughs> oh, yeah? Yeah. Now, look, Mr. Park. Mr. Benny, I don't want to argue about it. Come on, honey, let's get out of the car. We'll take the bus. Yes, dear. <laughs> Some people can never be satisfied. You're right, boss. You'd think they'd at least give the car a fair trial. Fair trial? Yeah, we ain't out of the driveway yet. <laughs> oh, well, come on. Let's push it back into the garage. Right? Jack, we'll be back in just a moment, but first... Some golfers like a seven iron and others like a three. But most of them pick Lucky Strike cause LSMFT. Try a pack today because Lucky's taste better than any other cigarette. Make your smoking joy complete when buying cigarettes. Enjoy the milder, better taste the Lucky Smoker gets. You see, Lucky's taste better than any other cigarette. Be happy, go lucky. Be happy, go lucky. Strike me happy, go lucky. Go lucky, strike today. Friends, when you smoke, you want real enjoyment. And that's exactly why you should switch to Lucky Strike. Because Lucky's taste better than any other cigarette. Yes, every Lucky always gives you mildness, smoothness, far better taste than any other cigarette you've ever smoked. And here's why. Fine tobacco, and only fine tobacco, always gives you the enjoyment of a better tasting cigarette. And LSMFT, Lucky Strike, means fine tobacco. So for complete smoking enjoyment, be happy, go lucky, make your next carton Lucky Strike. You'll find Lucky's taste better than any other cigarette. Be happy, go lucky, go lucky, strike today. Remember, Lucky's taste better than any other cigarette. Happy Mother's Day and good night, folks. <laughs> we sure to hear Dennis Day on the day in the life of Dennis Day. Stay tuned to the Annis Mandy Show, which follows immediately. The Jack Money program is heard by our forces overseas through the facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.